This video, I've titled it The CDI for Dummies. I'll try and give uh, a simple explanation of capacitor discharge ignition systems, which some of the old hands seem to shy away from. But in actual fact, they're, they're quite a doddle. And uh, far from fearing them, they are far more reliable, far less problematic, far more efficient. I know this goes against the traditional odds of old folks like me that like points and things, a mechanical nuts and bolts man. But when it comes to CDI ignition systems on any small engine, that is the way of the future. There is no doubt about that. And a lot of the problems, well, a lot of them can be self-inflicted or misunderstanding. So I'll give you a brief insight. I bought this this morning at a boot sale. It's a, a Kawasaki TD-18. It's a non-goer. The guy says uh, there's no spark, blah, blah, blah. And you can pull it as many times as you like and she's not going to go. So we've got issues, so have we got a spark? Now it's the first thing that people do when they come across engines with CDI, they assume that the CDI, that little black box, wherever it's hidden, full of magic, has somehow gone down. It must have because, gosh, they cost so much to replace, don't they? Well, chances are it hasn't gone down. Of all the engines and things that I get brought to me, and uh, CDI coils and little black box, can I test this, can I test that? Invariably there's nothing wrong with them. If they do go down it's due to ignorance and uh, misuse, I'll explain that perhaps a bit later. Anyway we will investigate whether we have or have not got a spark with this, so we'll have the spark plug out. And I'm pretty certain what I'm going to find. Ugh. That gap has been breached by oil carbon no way that can spark so don't blame CDI ignition but there still could be problems if there was no no spark there to cause the fuel mixture to ignite it would build up so we clean this up and we investigate well I've cleaned the plug if I put my hand behind, you should be able to see there is a a gap there, there now. I've thoroughly cleaned the, the insulator with petrol and a rag and allowed it to thoroughly dry. So we'll see if we actually have got a spark or no. Here I've wrapped a wire around the earth of the plug and with a crocodile clip clipped it to the ground, earth, of the little uh, brush cutter, strimmer, and if I stand behind the camera, see if I can do it this way, and pull the handle, if you look closely, no problems at all, there's a good spark there. Now we come to the nitty gritty. Right, what I've done now is I've turned the main light off because the camera looking at white paper, I'll try and do a a little bit of an explanation. Don't run away. I uh, won't make it complicated. And uh, for the technical ones amongst you, put your fingers in your ear or go and make a cup of tea. This is uh, aimed at... Uh, not aimed at you. <laughs> okay. So, whatever engine we've got, it can be a lawnmower, it can be a motorbike. The largest group I come across is outboard engines. Um... The reason outboard engines are, are 
the biggest group is because of their environment. You're going to get uh, corrosion with uh, salt water. And salt water is a, a much better conductor of electricity than fresh water. So we can have problems there. And for reasons I hope to explain, we're dealing with much higher voltages. And higher voltages um, are more susceptible to finding a way to Earth. They will take the line of least resistance. So when we look at a a spark from a spark plug and you see a sort of a thin bluish line you probably think oh that's a poor weak spark we want a nice big fat orange colored one well you don't the thin blue little line was had far more energy in it than the big fat orange one why is this well CDI ignition, uh, capacitor discharge ignition, the actual time cycle of the discharge compared to point system is much faster. So the duration of the spark is much shorter, but it is much, much more energy. Because it is shorter, the air around the spark does not have a chance to ionize and produce this characteristic orange glow. To prove the point you can take out that spark plug that had what you perceive to be a very thin poor spark and you can open up that gap three or four times and it will still jump across with a thin blue line. So this is the advantage of CDI, the higher, the higher voltages. So very basically, very simply, within your outboard somewhere you'll have a, presumably you'll have a flywheel and within this flywheel you will have a coil and that's your charge coil and within the CDI you'll have a condenser, a capacitor it's an electrical component which stores electricity if you like and within the rotor system you'll have a magnet there's our magnet and like all magnets you'll have a north end and a south end and as the magnet passes the charge coil, it induces a voltage into the coil. Further around the cycle there's a smaller coil and this is the trigger coil. Within our CDI there's a component called what's it called? The silicon controlled rectifier. Yes they are, get it right. And when a smaller voltage, because it's a smaller coil, comes around it goes to the CDR which triggers the dumping of the energy of the capacitor into the primary winding of the ignition coil. Because we are dealing with higher voltages than conventional points, we start at a higher level of voltage so we don't need to increase that voltage in the ignition coil so much so the ratio of coils from primary to secondary of an ignition coil on CDI systems is much much smaller. They're not the same. We don't need to um, multiply the voltages that much more. So they're slightly different. There may be, looking within this uh, flywheel arrangement, another coil. That's a charging coil, not to be confused with the charge coil. The charge coil charges the condenser, the trigger coil triggers the condenser to dump that energy through the primary of the ignition coil. The charging coil on outboards is usually for battery charging and because we have a magnet going through without getting too technical it comes out here as AC and if we want to charge a battery we have to change it to DC and we do that with diodes, but leave that for now. I don't want to get too technical along the road here. Um, the whole point I'm trying to, and it goes around in this direction, of course. The whole point I'm trying to put across here is that CDI have no moving parts whatsoever. 
The SCR is a switching device, but it's all electronics and it's all buried within the epoxy uh, resin block of the CDI. And the chances are it hasn't gone down. There are a lot more uh, components within the CDI, depending on the system and complexity of the engine, number of cylinders, and so forth. And this is a processing. It's to do with uh, speed range, dwell angles, things that really needn't concern you. We want to know, is it a go or a non-go? So because we have this, and I'm sorry to labour the point, but just bear with me, because we have this uh, higher voltage for a shorter dur duration, this higher voltage can seek its way to earth and kill our engine won't start. This can happen with bad connections, the slightest bit of corrosion, again outboard is a typical problem, cracked hardened wires, insulation, even the uh, spark suppressor often found in the plug tops of spark plug caps can go down. Anything can kill the, uh, the spark dead so it appears, for the uninitiated, that this is more, more of a problem. It isn't. Um, the only thing that uh, where ignorance can really destroy the CDI is if the primary of the CDI coil is disconnected. Now that can be connection problems, or it could have gone open circuit, but not very likely. Not very likely. If you look at... Um, the comments I've made to various people on the homemade CDI device for an outboard I made several years ago, you see that I've uh, kept coming back to several people to the point of almost giving up about this cleanliness, good connections, um, time and time again, and I've, I have almost given up, but um, people have persisted and, uh, and got them going. So that's the route to take. I hope I haven't overcomplicated this, but you need to have some basis on uh, which to work from. So if you think of a condenser, capacitor, whatever they call them nowadays, within the CDI, storing up loads of energy, only for that brief period, but it stores it up, and when we get to this trigger point, woof, it's let go, and that energy peak, if you like, goes into the coil. I'll do a simple representation of a coil. There we go. And it goes into the primary, and the secondary, having many more turns, gets induced with the voltage, so out to my spark plug comes a nice big spark. That's probably oversimplified, or not, as the case may be. But I'm doing this on the hoof. Um, Probably been better if I'd have organised some notes, but I don't work like that. So hopefully I've given you a bit of an insight. Let me run this back uh, on the monitor and uh, see if I can elaborate a bit more on this. Well, as you can see, we're, we're a goer. I think our oil petrol mix needs sorting and uh, I shall clean the carb. But it's a goer and uh, the guy had concerns of course but um, often these things are quite simple. So if I've encouraged you or given you encouragement to go and have another look at that engine that won't start and bearing in mind the points I've made you then do get it to start you got me to thank ha <laughs> ha so uh, there is a an appreciation donation button on my uh, website hint hint but for God's sake don't make it less than 50p otherwise I have to pay and I'm out of pocket <laughs> Ah, um, let's go a bit further on uh, websites and 
YouTube channel. Several people are asking me questions and I do my level best to answer them. I like to be helpful. Uh, I get a lot of info from YouTube so I like to re repay this. Um, but some people don't make it easy. Often they'll ask a question and if they bother to scroll further down the answer is already there. Probably answered much better than I could by somebody else. But a lot of people ask a question and you check out yours, there's often a question mark at the end but underneath the comment there's no reply button. So you put yourself out and you go to their channel and you go to their about button and you click on that and you click on send message and you you write a message saying uh, answering their query if you can perhaps giving them a link and so forth and then you click send and it comes up you know that uh, there's been no opportunity to send the message it's been deactivated or not enabled that's it let's get the right wording it's not enabled so how on earth they expect to get replies to questions when they've disabled replies beats me. Perhaps they're working within all this circles and squares and whatever of Google Plus. Well, forget that as far as I'm concerned. So, that's the comments bit. Um, I welcome all comments, good or bad, I don't mind. Um, if they're constructive criticism, that's fine. Once in a while I I get a few people give the old thumbs down. Well, you can't please everyone, can you? Um, no one can do that. But it would be nice to know sometimes what it is they dislike. Have I not described it well enough? Did I not express myself well? Was this not what they were looking for? And unless they let me know, I can do most things, but clairvoyant I am not. Unless they let me know that uh, for this reason or that reason they didn't think much of the video, fine. Let me know and I'll try and work on it. But keep it friendly, guys, eh? <laughs> the best part of doing these videos is the interaction. The feedback, if you like. I've come across some really great guys. Very helpful and... Um, They'll help out where they can, and, and I'm trying to do the same. Anyway, I'm prattling on here. Um, I only hope you've probably found this of some uh, interest. Yes, I know I could have put it a lot, lot better, but this is poor old chap with his handicap. It isn't Steven Spielberg with researchers and technical operators, OK? Bear that in mind. So cheers for now. Thanks for watching. Just a quick add on here, hope you're still with me and haven't gone. If you want to follow um, the CDI theme, I did do a video on how to make a, a CDI HD coil tester. Dead simple, you can make it for a couple of quid. It's on one of my videos, can't remember exactly what I called it, but something like that. Take a look, and there's also one on homemade CDI Get Your Home module. Please bear in mind we're dealing with 40,000 volts here, so uh, that could be lethal. Bear it in mind.